Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Rajesh Chen. In today's tutorial, we are going to have a look how domain separation works in Flowlist. And in our last session, we covered how domain separation works in workflow. So if you missed out that, please have a look on the description here. You will get the playlist link. Okay, so let's start how domain separation works in Flow Designer. Okay, so Tenant cannot override in Flow Designer content. So we have seen like uh, in workflow, you can check out the existing workflow and create a separate overridden entry of the domain. But uh, here in child domain, you cannot uh, add it or you cannot override the existing flow, which is designed in uh, parent domain. So service provider is ideally supposed to manage that and that's the difference uh, you will get uh, between the workflow and the flow designer in terms of the uh, design or administration where service provider is going to administrator or ensure things are properly defined in parent domain as well as in child domain but in terms of data it works uh, uh, same so if user belongs to child domain the child domain uh, workflow is going to run. So although we cannot override it, but here we need to uh, we need to use some of the best practices to ensure the right workflow is triggered uh, whenever domain separation exists. Okay, so a user working in the parent domain can trigger flow in child domain such as ABC or XYZ. These are the two domains we have created in the parent. So there is a recommendation like whenever we create a flow in any of the domain, we ideally should use the domain name also. So here parent, ABC and XYZ are domains. So uh, if there is a flow that is created as validate incidents, then we should use validate incident parent, validate incident ABC, validate incident XYZ. And we have the specific domain specific condition or trigger condition to ensure the right set of flow is triggered. So support level is standard. Now let's have a look on if editing is going to done, then uh, uh, administrators are supposed to ensure they uh, switch to the appropriate domain and uh, do the uh, proper changes. Okay, so if you need to go through uh, further documentation, there is a service now link and you can go through it. Just a tip, in Flow Designer, if you are using approval activity, do not keep it to the individuals, keep it to the group members. And there is a separate property that ensure, like if we want only members to approve who belongs to the appropriate group, uh, then we need to have a look on this property. Please check out the documentation for more details in it. Okay. Now, uh, in terms of data, uh, let's understand how domain assignment works. So, as I, uh, as as we know, like if API call is done from the specific user, the record is going to create in the same domain. For the email trigger, it depends on the email sender's domain. Uh, the record triggers based on the or the domain for that particular record is triggered. For schedules, it depends on the domain of the flow. So if flow is defined in child domain, and uh, then the schedule trigger is going to happen for the child domain only. Service catalog trigger, that is based on the RITM domain. So please ensure uh, you understand all these uh, points, and accordingly, the domain separation is going to work in uh, your system. Now, domain separation behavior uh, in workflow and flow designer, as we spoke in starting, in workflow, in terms of the design, workflows can be overridden in child domain, but in flow designer, we cannot override the flows. So, we need to write a new flow or we need to copy the existing flow, rename it, rename to ensure we understand from the flow name, like uh, what is the purpose and for which domain it is used for. In terms of data perspective, it's same. If a child user is triggering that workflow, then child domain 
work flow is going to trigger. Similarly, the child domain flow is going to trigger in if it's defined in flow designer. So let's go to the uh, instance and have a look on uh, uh, these concepts. So we, what we are going to do is we will create a flow in parent domain and then we will try to update the same flow in child domain. So as we spoke like this is not possible, right? In child domain we cannot overwrite that. So what we are going to do? We are going to use this naming convention method to create a new uh, domain and ensure the parent domain flow is not triggered when we are working in child. Okay, so let's go to the tool. Here in this uh, instance, I have parent and ABC and XYZ, three domains created, and ABC and XYZ are children of parent. Okay, right now I am in parent domain and let's uh, let's create a uh, flow. Yeah, let's go to flow designer and we will create a uh, flow here. So in this exercise, we are going to set some of the field in change record that is emergency change and ensure those fields are updated differently and based on the conditions, trigger conditions we have defined for parent and child. Okay, so let's create a new workflow and uh, we will set some of the emergency change. Remain is parent. So uh, we had a look on the best practices we see that says like if we are going to create this for the parent let's add the domain also in, uh, uh, name itself because we don't like uh, the same workflow is not going to be utilized for the child if we want to customize it. If we don't want to customize it, want to use the same workflow, we need not to add any uh, domain name. But here we have a requirement where we need different different workflows. So let's make it as a parent. We will try to edit the same workflow if it's editable. Okay, add some triggers. So uh, we want when the change record is updated. Table is change request. Add some conditions here. So you can put any condition that should be specific, like when change state is assessed, authorized accordingly. Uh, you can make the changes in the condition. But I'm just writing it if it's change created or updated, and if the change type is emergency, then let's run this workflow. And I, I want this to run only once. So front trigger condition, I'm fine now. Let's have some of the actions here where we can say uh, we need to update uh, the record. Let's say update the record. And uh, this that's the same record we want to update. And uh, field. Justification field. This is justified change using flow design so that we are uh, unsure like this is the one we are getting. Add one more field here. That's a test plan. No testing needed for this. Let's say done. And uh, we can save this and then we can activate this as well. Okay. 
Okay. Now what we can do is we can create a change record. So first ensure we are in right domain. Yes. And uh, this is emergency new and uh, I can simply save it. So change record is created now. And let's see if uh, flow got triggered. Yes, so uh, let's uh, update the record and update. Okay, so you can see justification and test plan is updated here. Okay, so this particular uh, flow rain in parent domain. Now let's have a, a look again because if if we keep this condition, this the same workflow is also going to run in child domain also, but this is not something we want, right? So we need to have the specific condition here. Let's add the domain also. This is what we can do. So let's say add domain is there. So this workflow is only going to run when domain is bad. Okay, and activate this. Now let's go and change uh, this particular domain and uh, let's update domain from parent to ABC. So now ideally this particular flow which is created in parent domain only should not run here okay so this is the change record in abc domain and uh, uh, okay this is the same before open let's create a new one I just saved this particular record, uh, change record here. Okay, now let's go to Flow Designer and have a look. Uh, let's refresh this page because this page anyway was created in parent domain and uh, have a look on this. So, if you have a look, uh, this particular flow is non empty. Okay. I cannot make any change to this particular flow. Even if I, uh, it, it shows some of the fields editable. If I update this as well, remove it as well, then there is no, no button to activate, deactivate and uh, uh, save. So what we can do is, we can create a copy of this flow if you want to make a change. So let's make a copy of it. Use the proper naming conventions. Okay, and now uh, I can make any change. So first change what we can do is we can change the domain. So here domain is uh, ABC and accordingly the uh, the conditions what we are going to make the change in update, change or update, create whatever is required in terms of field or anything that can be done here. So I want to, uh, if this is in ABC, then uh, the backout plan also should be updated. Okay, so no backup required. You, you can update a configuration item or any other particular field as needed. And I don't want plan, uh, test plan to be added. So I remove the test plan, added the backup plan. Here, let me add uh, domain also so that uh, we understand like this particular workflow is running. So it's kind of a uh, separate inactive workflow right now. Okay, so let's save this and uh, let me activate this as well. Okay, so this particular uh, work, uh, workflow, not workflow, sorry, this particular flow is now uh, activated. So uh, let's update this particular change record itself. Let's reload this. First. Okay, 
and uh, now I am assigning a group to this so that uh, this particular record is uh, updated. Type is emergency, uh, domain is ABC. Okay, let's wait for a few minutes and see if flow, rain, and updating the record. Yeah, let's refresh it. And you can see this is updated. Here, backward plan is updated, not the test plan. So, this ensure proper flow is running behind the, uh, this change curve. Okay, so hope uh, this helps to understand uh, how domain separation works in flow design. Okay, now uh, what is going to happen if I select XYZ? Ideally, none of the workflow should run. Because in parent we have the parent adjust as a kindly trigger condition. In ABC we have ABC domain mentioned as a trigger condition. So if I want to make any change in the parent, first uh, I need to add the proper condition. So if uh, uh, there is a condition, the domain should be either parent or XYZ, then the first uh, or parent workflow could have to go. But this time, ideally there should not any workflow that is going to trigger for. So, this helps to understand uh, how domain separation works in uh, uh, Flow Designer. Okay, thank you.